A decade is a lot of time in the fast moving tech world. The last 10 years have seen a lot of change in the world of technology, but what will the next decade bring us? A decade ago, the hottest smartphone on the market was the iPhone 3GS, a phone with a minuscule 3.5 display and a far cry from the 6.5 screen available on the iPhone XS today. Its peers have got bigger too, now coming packed with integrated circuits, allowing us to do our shopping from our living room just by talking. So what's in store for the 22s? Here are the 10 predictions. Number 10. Personal Flying Transportation Over the course of the last year, a number of jetpack and personal flying machines were developed and successfully flown by engineers from across the world. French inventor Frank Zapata said he had only a 50% chance of success when he attempted to cross the channel on his flyboard, but he did it. And former Royal Marine Richard Browning used a jet suite he invented to negotiate one of the toughest assault courses in the military. Now he's set up a company to come up with new ways to could be used. And Dobe police have begun training on hover bugs and in the hope they can help first responders unit reach areas that would otherwise be difficult to reach. The futuristic vehicles are invented to be in action this year. Number 9. Living homes as your own personal factories. Professor Rachel Armstrong is a professor of experimental architecture at Newcastle University and co-ordinator of the Living Architecture Project. She said by the year 230 houses are more self-sufficient in terms of energy and resources to the point where we were wind of fossil fuel based domestic systems. Using the incredible processing power of microbes, the tiny organisms that make our soil fertile and whose ancient ancestors are contained within fossil fuels. Within fossil fuels, each home will have a digester that provides an ideal home for microbes which feeds on our liquid waste. As they feed on our waste fluids, they turn them into the clean water, low power, 12 volt electricity supply, and a range of organic compounds that can be used for a range of things like fertilizer. Clean water will be recycled back into our bathrooms and kitchens, reducing our overall water consumption. Organic matter will be used to feed our pot plants, window boxes, and gardens, so we won't need to buy fertilizers to make them greener. The low power electricity supply will not only be able to change our mobile phones and lighting, but also perform a range of automated tasks using robots around our home. Fitted with an artificial intelligence that knows just how much energy and resources you, your plants, and microbes need to have a healthy home, these cyber systems will become a living system that looks after us. Different kinds of microbes can make different useful products like heat and know that we've learned how to engineer them using synthetic biology techniques. New regulations will enable them to be installed in home under specific conditions where they make high-value products like vitamins, medicines, food, and even remove pollutants. People living in these homes are no longer just consumers of resources but are producers of valuable substances that can be used to trade or give to others in need, forming the basis of a new kind of off-grid domestic economics. Number 8. What won't change? The nature of humanity. Professor Genevieve Bell has a PhD in cultural anthropology and after a long career at tech giant Intel, now heads the, the 3A Institute in Australia, examining the human impact of AI. She told Sky News, When asked about the future, I often look at the past. It might not give us the answers, but it always helps me frame better questions and points of view. I think that is because the things that make us human change very slowly, certainly nowhere near as fast as technology changes. She, she added, back in 2003, science fiction writer William Gibson said, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. I believe there are parts of the futures that are all around us, we just need to look for them. And these new devices do more than just the task at hand. So they also enable masses of data to be collected, where that data goes, who uses, who uses this collected data and for what are new questions and raises new challenges. Number 7. A all will augment, not replace, humans. Dr. Nicola J. Milliard is a BT Principal Innovation Partner. She isn't a technologist but 
combines psychology with futurology to try to anticipate what might be lying around the corner. She said although artificial intelligence has yet to reach the sophistication of R2D2 or C3PO, there is no doubt that automation will impact us all in the future. Augmented intelligence where has human and machines exploit each other's experience is likely to become an increasingly common way of working. She added looking into the next decade playing games, inter interpreting the stock market, writing articles about football, spotting patterns in large messy data sets, and performing activities in highly structured and predictable environments are all relatively easy for machines to learn to do. But by uh, uh, 2030 we will also start to see all AI tasking as much more sophisticated shape as humans will start to trust machines to fly plans, uh, diagnose illness and manage financial affairs unsupervised. And we will also see artificial intelligence start to impact uh, transport in a big way with uh, smart cities and uh, smart cars being the new nerve. But with AI comes more moral, more dilemmas of many of these advancements. Think for example of the self-driving car. Should the car swerve the, to avoid the pedest, uh, pedestrian if it thinks that there is a high likelihood that his action will injure the driver? And who is responsible? This is a legal gray area that will need to be addressed in the future. Number 6. The abolition of aging. Dr. Ian Pearson, a futurologist who has researched different ways to extend human life and pointed to advance in gen genetic studies. Dr. Pearson said we are looking at the genetic modification set that of things already and we are looking to the technologies in biotech that will allow us to play with uh, telomeres or cells linked with the aging process on the end of the DNA strands. He added the technologies for life extension that it offers are probably around the uh, 2040, 2050 or 2060 time frame when we'll have the IT that will allow us to live pretty much forever or at least until the IT stop working. We will make direct links to the brain and make re replies of our brain or make an extension of your brain outside in the computer world. Therefore your mind will carry on on uh, migrating into that computer area and at the some point in your distance future 99% of your mind is living in the computer so if your body dies you lose 1% of your mind the rest of it carries one as is nothing had happened you buy an android use that as your body from now on and you carry on living number five will the uk become a surveillance state 2020 will be a turning point for the future of surveillance in the UK. We'll have a definitive judgment from the highest court in Europe on whether mass surveillance breaches human rights. We'll also have pivotal fights against states and, co and corporate uses of facial recognition, social media monitoring, encryption backdoors, automated decisions making and predictive analytics. In 10 years from now, we could be a major civilian state with a population that's watched, listened to, recorded and tracked more pervasively than ever before, and indeed a population that records and tracks itself. It could be a data-driving nation of ambient surveillance and constant quantification. Implants and biometrics would be part of everyday life and surveillance would lace the smart homes and cities with living. But it all depends on the choices we make in the next year or so. If we make the right ones, we will look back on this as the dark decade of surveillance. And the future will be one where technologies make us more free, not less. Number 4. Data becomes more honest. Ronald Sampson is a senior policy advisor at the Open Data Institute. Her, her vision of the future is one of which the value of data is uh, collectively and collaboratively released. She said data is new form of infrastructure for us and for society as a whole. In 2030, the world of data will probably look uh, much like it does today, but probably look much like it does today. But we will have a more nuanced approach to how we will 
we live our digital lives, so the opportunities for the control will likely remain weak and uh, the constant model will be broken beyond repair. The love affair with the big data will have sourced good accurate authoritative data will be the hot desire. Community will become more uh, meaningful, people will seek to share and engage in smaller groups rather than long for the world to know everything. This will probably be inspired by an uh, exhaustion with fake news and uh, falsehoods on social media and the need for accurate, trustful information. Individuals will have a greater sense of what data about them is and where their comfort with sharing lies. And the last item returning to the moon. This year marked the uh, 50th anniversary of the moon landings and uh, now a number of national agencies and private companies are planning on returning mankind to the moon by 2030. The US Space Agency NASA plans to not only return to the moon before 2030, but to journey beyond it and land a human on Mars. Also, that may not take place within the decade. This time we are going to the moon to stay. Said NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine adding, and from there we'll take the next giant leap in deep space exploration. It won't seem like by another great step for a man, either. Marking the 5th fifth, fifth anniversary since the Apollo 11 mission in which humans first stepped onto the moon, Mr. Bridenstine has told the Sky News the agency is sending a woman to the moon in 2000. For 24. Meanwhile, Elon Musk, the billionaire front of SpaceX, has claimed it would be easier for his company to land on the moon first rather than try to convince NASA that the company is up to the task. And even richer billionaire Jeff Bezos has also announced his plans for his own private space exposition company, Blue Origin, to send a spaceship to the moon. China's space agency also landed a lunar rover this year as a part of its changed formation, which has been to the dark side of the moon since January. The head of the China National Space Administration, Zhang Keijun, has announced its plans to land humans' crew on the south pole of the moon within the next 10 years. But who will get there first? We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for seeing my video. I love you guys.